Welcome to Not Just a Transaction, a podcast series hosted by experienced real estate authorities, Nick Prefontaine and Zachary Beach. In each episode, the hosts bring you expert guests to help you navigate the many creative options available for buying or selling a home while cutting out the costly hurdles of a conventional real estate deal. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Not Just a Transaction. I'm your host, Nick Prefontaine, along with my brother-in-law, Zachary Beach. Today, we'd like to welcome to the show, Dan Breslin. Now, Dan is the current host of the REI Diamonds podcast. He is the founder and president of Diamond Equity Investments, a quick flip investment company with yearly revenues over $3 million, currently operating in Chicago, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Tampa, and Miami. Since founding the company in 2006, he has closed hundreds of deals. All of those deals off market, except one. And that one was a bad deal. The one that he used in Asia, and he actually lost money on. These days, he does between anywhere from 25 and 50 deals, uh, dealing directly with the seller every single month. And Dan, with that as a little summary, welcome to the show. Thank you, Nick. Good to be here. Dan, welcome, my man. Um, Thank you, Zach. I'm excited to have you on. I think since the last time we spoke, uh, you've entered into new markets, which is Pretty exciting. I, I believe so. That was a lot of markets that Nick uh, hammered off there. So uh, it sounds like you're doing a lot of transactions. So for the listeners to know, like, wh- what do you do? Like, what do you actually do are there at uh, REI Diamond? Yeah, Diamond Equity Investments is my house flipping company. We buy and sell houses primarily. We do buy, you know, uh, run down apartment buildings, mismanaged apartment buildings and things like that as they come through. But 95% of our transactions are going to be houses that people are going to live in. We're big proponents of home ownership. We like people to be proud of the house that they're living in. And a lot of the people who choose to do business with our organization do so because of the transformation that we're going to leave behind. We, uh, we sponsor the Neighborhood Beautification Program. And our thing is to find and identify any distressed, outdated house, you know, overgrown, uh, junk cars in the driveway, uh, you name it. And then we do our best to contact those owners and, and try to make a deal that works for both of us and cleaning up the neighborhood in the process. So we're all about home ownership and we're all about transformation in, in, in our business and what we leave behind. Wow, that that's amazing. So you're focused on, and I think a lot of a lot of we're seeing a theme with a lot of the guests that we're having on the show. You're focused on more than just that one investment, but the the kind of improvement of the area in the neighborhood, and that's what builds strong communities. So that that's definitely good to hear. Yeah, Dan. So, I mean, you're doing a lot with your business now and your podcast. Let's even just take a quick step back because obviously there's probably some sort of story to be told on why you ended up in this real estate world. So uh, maybe just peel us back a little bit and, and tell us how you got involved in real estate and, uh, and you know, how you kind of built this business now. Yeah. And I always wanted to be in real estate as a kid. My dad had a couple failed rentals that we were, you know, helping out as like nine, 10 year old kid, me and my brother and sisters, uh, you know, way back in the 80s. But the real moment of truth came for me in 2004, 2005. I had been uh, kind of a raging alcoholic, drug addict, and was uh, challenged with that stuff for a long time. And I got clean as a result of going to jail for crashing a car that I did not own. So I spent about a year in jail for that. Red Rich Dad, Poor Dad during that time. And I remember thinking it was going to be very, very hard for me as a convicted felon to get a job when I came back out, uh, you know, out onto the street. Um, Little did I know that I would probably not ever apply for a job again because I ended up going to a real estate seminar and, and kind of like learning how to flip houses and I think it was like six, seven, eight months out of uh, out of jail. I did my first deal. I had a couple flips going on. People had uh, had enough belief in me. I was blessed to have some partners who literally funded, you know, the first couple of rehabs partnered with me. 
And still, you know, the gentleman I'm thinking of still partners with me literally to this day running uh, the Philadelphia market. So it's been one wonderful journey, but not without trials as uh, the, the drinking and drug addiction thing didn't finally, God willing, become kind of forever put in the past in the rear view until January 21st, 2012. So I still have some trials and tribulations there. But ever since 2012 to where we're at now in 2021, it's been uh, it's been an ever shining brighter light on our company and my personal life uh, as well. And I'm, I'm just truly blessed. Yeah, it's, it's quite the journey wow. and, and a lot of lessons learned there. I, I'm, if people don't know and haven't read the books in which I was involved in, I had a drug addiction as well since I was real young. So I can applaud you for, for making through that part of your life and, and taking a bunch of learning lessons. And uh, I think with every success, um, whether it be Nick's accident or you and I's drug addiction, um, there's, there's a lot of trials and tribulations that go through it. And uh, now I think it's shining through on the business and how you're helping both, uh, both buyers and sellers. So looking at it from that standpoint, um, when you're, when you're looking for these properties, like tell us some benefits, like, let's say somebody's listening to this and they're in the Philly market or they're in the uh, Atlanta market and they have that house that has the junk cars and stuff in the driveway. Like, how are you helping them? What, tell us maybe some benefits and, and, uh, and, and maybe even a deal or two that you've worked on where you've seen a success story there. Yeah. And for us, it's like, it's all about the fast and convenient sale. So like when, uh, when a seller contacts, like let's say a real estate agent, an ordinary real estate agent, there's kind of like, not really, it's not really a concrete, solution right away uh you don't know whether the real estate agents like you know high enough quality to get the job done or maybe they, they don't know what they're doing let's say that they do know what they're doing uh and they're experienced and can deliver the service but from the moment that someone contacts the real estate agent you know they come up with this price they put it on the market and a lot of times if it's the house with the junk car in the driveway and you know we're talking like old kitchen maybe it's a leaky roof maybe it's mold issues like that house goes to a real estate agent and goes on the market like other investors, just like our company will bid on that just as well. And like we're a well-funded organization and we pay like decent prices for the houses that we buy in that condition because we know what we're doing when we're renovating. Uh, we know what we're going to get on the flip side when we sell. We have a good reputation in our market, so we can usually sell our houses like faster and sometimes for more money on the flip side than comparable properties just because we're known for what we do in our marketplaces. Um, but when a seller contacts the real estate agent, it's, there's no conclusion there. There's still this like time period of putting it on the market, doing a handful of showings, hoping that you get the offer. Maybe there's a, the suggested cleanup period. The agent says, well, you got to get the car towed out of here. You got to, you know, trash out the, uh, the basement. You got to kind of get all your stuff out of here. And then we're going to do the showings. And heck, that can be a lot of work for people. And then in the end, when we get to that same end result, they may end up selling it to me anyway, and then paying the real estate commission in the middle of it. Whereas when they contact us directly, we come out and we make an offer like on the spot, typically right then and there, we know what we're doing. We know the construction costs, we know the values, and we're confident in being able to deliver a check for the amount uh, that we promised to that deal. Like we guarantee that we're going to go to closing at that price. No home inspection. No. Oh, we forgot about this. No. Oh, the financing didn't come through. Like it's a done deal. And so the seller in that scenario, when dealing directly with diamond equity has a sense of certainty when they sign that agreement of sale. And that can be done in a very, very speedy process. I mean, we've had a phone call come in at 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, and we're under contract by, you know, four or five, six o'clock the same day. And we can be at settlement three, four, five days later. But typically the seller needs two weeks, three weeks, four weeks to kind of get their affairs in order and then move out and we're going to settlement. And if they need another week or two, we can extend and we're kind of flexible on the timeline since we're not living there. So you got concrete certainty on the front end. And then you got some flexibility on the back end. And we do things like moving services and, um, you know, relocation service. And we've got some other things to kind of help people transition from situation they were in to the new and better situation. So peace of mind is what you're sounding like you're providing for, for the sellers out there who are, who are just done with it. Um, they just don't want to be tied to the property anymore and don't want to have the additional responsibility. Spot on. Awesome. 
Well, I think um, so. We've we've covered in detail what it is, you know, who you are, what it is you do. I think um, a question that we always like to ask anyone who's on the show is, why is it not just a transaction to you? In other words, why do you give a shit? <laughs> well, when you put it that way, I mean, you guys already know this from being in the business, like selling a home, buying a home is an emotional decision. Uh, it's a once in a lifetime decision. I get it. Maybe you buy four or five houses throughout the your lifetime. Maybe you turn into a real estate investor and buy a hundred more houses. But for the average person, you know, in our example of the junk car in the driveway that hasn't run in 10 years and the basement full of junk that they have no intention on going through uh, for that person who maybe is still living in that situation. This is this is a big traumatic thing that's going to happen. Right. And we're here for this like life transition. So if it's that person who's leaving behind this situation that occurred over a decade or two, right, with the junk car, or perhaps it's somebody who's lost their mom or dad, right? A lot of estate sales. We buy houses from people who've lost uh, elderly parents. These parents grew up in like kind of the depression era, and they were impacted by like, look, we're going to use this old kitchen forever because it works. Like they had no, my grandma has no intention on changing out her kitchen, even though we'll pay for it, we'll do it. No, I don't even want you to do it. Just sell it as is when it's all said and done. And I'll move on. So like we're there to kind of and we, we understand and we respect as a company and organization just how big and monumental it is to say sell mom and dad's house. And, and I may not be talking about like it may not be the money and the price that they're getting on that house, but more the fact that they celebrated holidays here. The turkey was carved on that kitchen counter, right? They don't want to go and gut that all out for what an extra 20, 30 grand in profit if they renovate the whole house. They got to tear out all the, all the memories of their house have to be torn out so that they could get an extra 20. They, they're not interested. Sometimes they're not capable, don't have the money to do the renovation. But even more than that, it's just easier to kind of close the chapter on that for people in that situation with the inheritances and move on. Right. For the price, the convenience, to peace of mind and all that. Uh, and then let us kind of do the heavy lifting and, and uh, you know, the, the work of doing the renovation. And then we put that property that's all renovated in the hands of some, a lot of times newer, younger couples with young kids or maybe no kids and the kids are on the way. We get them, they write letters to us a lot, you know, like we want to get the house for this reason and we're going to be in the backyard and the barbecue grills and the whole thing. Uh, and then that new family, you know, comes in and carves the turkey up the following Thanksgiving and they celebrate the holidays and they make a whole nother lifetime of memories in that house. That's so going to be another 10, 20, 30, 40 years, who knows? And we take a lot of pride and we're really grateful to the sellers and to the marketplace for giving us that opportunity to kind of be the, uh, the intermission between the two chapters of this house's life. There's the house that the person has that whole lifetime of memories before we get there, they call us, gives them a nice clean break. And then here comes the next family to start the kind of the next chapter uh, of what's going to happen with that house. So it's not just a transaction. It's not just the house. Like these are people's homes. And we see that we're, uh, you know, we're a really critical piece to that transition happening smoothly and easily with as much uh, grace as humanly possible, if you will. Yeah. And you, you couldn't have said it any better. Like uh, I, I was watching Nick's face as well. And if you're not, if you watch this on the YouTube or you're just listening to this on podcast, uh, Dan was telling an amazing story there and kind of walked us through um, those two pieces. And it makes perfect sense to me with the closing of the chapter and the beginning of the other one. So I think that there's a lot of sellers out there and buyers that are going to be lucky enough to work with you, Dan. So if you could, do you want to just go ahead and share with the audience uh, and the listeners, I, you know, how to best get a hold of you and your company uh, in case they're in one of your markets uh, to, you know, tra make that transition with their family. Yeah, absolutely. And we're we're putting in place some different contacts around the country so that we're able to do this for anyone in all potentially all 50 states. But right now we have locations and offices set up in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, Atlanta, Georgia, Chicago, Illinois and Philadelphia, PA. And we'll buy anywhere in about a two or three hour radius around and even a little further in the states, you know, Georgia, Pennsylvania, way out there to Pittsburgh and stuff like that. But you can go to diamondequity.com 
and just uh, give us a call, fill out the information. We're happy to talk to you. And if there's, you know, if there's not something we can do, maybe we can point you in a direction of somebody who can. Awesome. Well, we'll make sure to go ahead and include that in the show notes. Dan, is there any question that we missed? I know I show up on podcasts. I'm like, oh, I just wish they asked me this. Was there any <laughs> last question that we didn't ask you that um, you wanted to add some value? I, I don't know if there is. Um, I think, you know, words of, of final wisdom. I've seen some people who have houses that are probably better to be sold to an investor. And I hate when I see this happen. Um, and, and they kind of rather say like, well, they think it's all about the money. Well, I want to sell it for the highest amount of money possible and say, no, we don't want to take your offer. We want to, uh, you know, we want to do the renovation ourselves. And I see a lot of those renovations go down where the renovation goes off the rails. Uh, maybe they're, you know, look, if you're a contractor and you do this every day of the week, don't even call us, right? You're, you're better served renovating your entire house and then selling it retail and squeezing every last penny out. But if renovating houses is not your thing, like a full house renovation, a bathroom, a kitchen, a second bathroom, finishing a basement, um, these things can take years. And they are also very high risk. And what I mean by that is like the failed renovation sellers that come back to us six months, eight months, a year later, uh, they're out more money than the work that they've gotten done. And in a lot of cases, like a contractor ran off with the, the deposit or maybe the contractor did like half the job and it was like a niece or a, a nephew or, a, uh, you know, my brother did it or whatever. And it could be like a, ran could out be a niece. But yeah, niece. niece could be a niece. True. My, my <laughs> sister's renovating her whole house as we speak. Uh, maybe runs in the family. So, yeah, it's like, you know, they could they could uh, they could avoid all that pain by kind of taking in personal inventory, being honest with yourself. If, you know, a full renovation, 20, 30, 40, 60, 70,000, 80,000 dollars worth of construction, like there's a high risk there. Like even if you have the money, do you have the skill set and kind of the uh, stamina to complete that? And for a lot of people who are not in the business of renovating houses, there's probably going to be easier ways to make that same amount of money up somewhere else than attempting the renovation. It's like it's heartbreaking to me to see them, you know, twenty two, twenty five thousand dollars into a renovation. And we can't pay twenty five thousand more because there was not twenty five thousand dollars worth of work done. So I guess the short and simple is just uh, beware of the costs and risks associated with renovating a house it's not quite like you see on hgtv for the first one by the fifth or the tenth house maybe you're going to start to kind of get it down but that first and second house it can be risky dan everything you're saying i know we were wrapping up there but everything you're saying throughout this whole time you've been on zach and i are both smiling we're grinning ear to ear and nodding our heads because <laughs> it's just it's amazing the the sellers that that we end up working with and we're as you know we're also investors so the sellers that that we end up working with it's amazing day one when we first get it under contract to day 60 or 90 once we're a little bit more serious in the process how their mindset completely changes from day one and how they have to go through that process to get to that day, whatever, 60 or 90, and be ready to move on with their life. So there's so much of what you said here today that Zach and I both can agree with, and we appreciate your insight and what you're doing for families across the country. Nice. Yeah, same goes for you guys. You guys are doing a lot of cool stuff, make a lot of deals that are... Uh that are very challenging for a lot of other investors to make. And I, I, I commend the, uh, the creativity and the, the long-term perspective that you guys uh, bring to the real estate market. It's refreshing. Love it. Okay. And thanks again for uh, spending some time with us. And if you're listening to this podcast here, this was another episode of Not Just a Transaction. So if you're here on iTunes, Spotify, any other place in which you listen to podcasts, please make sure you go ahead and rate and review. Also, if you are, have any questions or are interested in working with uh, Nick, myself, and the family team here at Pre Property Solutions, go to prepropertysolutions.com forward slash podcast and click the contact us and we'll be in touch with you real soon. Everybody have a fantastic Wednesday and we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of Not Just a Transaction. If you want to explore selling a home, 
buying a home or resources to learn more, go to prepropertysolutions.com.